Today I'm going to run through the instructions that I have on my uh, on my website uh, for a do-it-yourself library. It's a flat top library, um, so I just kind of want to give everybody an idea how simple it really is. I mean, you're going to need some basic tools. You're going to need a table saw, miter saw, nailers, glue, drill, etc. Uh, to finish it. But for those of you who really aren't sure how to gather one up and put it together, I have the instructions uh, on my site. So I'm just going to run through the cut list. It'll probably be a two or three part video series for you. Um, so let's get started. So in the instructions I do have a cut list uh, and this board in front of me is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a laminated pine board. It is a 1 by 16 by 8 foot long um, piece. This one's a little bit thinner so I'll be adapting um, the instructions for it to be 5 eighths instead of 3 quarters of an inch. Um, but I don't know. You can, I don't know if you can see that or not. Right at the top there's a cut list so I'm going to follow that and show you what all that means. So to start with the floor and the back are going to be 18 inches long, so I'm actually going to cut this just over, uh, just over 36, maybe 36 and a quarter, and I will cut that on the saw. The so I cut a piece at 36 and a quarter. Um, I now put them on the table saw. Cut two pieces at 18. So this will be the back wall. And the floor I cut to 11 and a quarter here and we're going to keep this little cut off but on this back piece I am going to cut a bevel on the one edge so at 11 degrees so I've just set it at 15 just because it's a good number and I will I've set the table saw at 11 degrees so let's cut that bevel on the side. So now what's left of our board, we're going to cut the uh, side pieces. Each side is going to be 17 and a quarter inches long, so I'm going to cut this at 35. Just give us a little extra playroom on that. And then we're going to uh, put her up back on the table saw and wrap it to 12 inches. Okay, so I have now got the table saw set up to 12 inches. Let's take that down. So now with um, these two left over cut off pieces, I'm going to cut them down to two inches. So you can see I've got this saw blade down about an eighth of an inch below because we're going to cut a dado in this door frame so that our Lexan can sit into it. Okay, so I'm going to set this saw blade at about, about three eighths for the first cut. Now this depends on your, the thickness of your Lexan and on the thickness of your saw blade uh, because we do want to cut a groove to make sure that the uh, Lexan fits into the groove. So here we go.
as you can see, I've got these off-centered so that when we cut the miters in and we go to build this door, it's easier to line up the thick edge with the thick edge rather than running, trying to run it exactly down the middle and uh, probably having a heck of a time matching them up. So let's uh, give these a quick sand and I'll cut the miters in it and we'll, I'll show you how to build a door pretty soon. Again with that leftover 24 inch piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one strip at two and three quarter inches and that's going to be the front piece on the bottom, so underneath the door. I'm going to cut another one at two and three quarters, then I'm going to put an 11 degree bevel on that so it'll match up with the top, uh, the top of the door and the angle of the wall. Here we go. Now, for the pieces that are going to go on either side of the door, those are going to be cut at one and a half. So again, that same 24 inch piece, we're just going to flip it over because again, I have this bevel on this side now. But you only need one of these uh, because there's going to be more than enough to do full sides. The rest of them I'm going to cut into 7 8 strips of anything that's left over. Um, because these are going to be the soffit pieces along the edge of the of the uh, at the, the edge of the roof. pieces that we need to actually just build the library. So that's how you get um, a full library out of one piece of 1 by 16 by 8 foot long. This is a little chunk that's left over. If you want to put a shelf in it, you'll need to have a little bit more. But just for the basic body of it, yeah, we got it covered. So let's get to building. Okay, here are our door pieces with the bevels in them. So I'm going to give this edge a quick sand because it's easier to sand this before you put the lac sand in than afterwards. <laughs> two of these at 13 inches uh, to the outsides of the, of the uh, miters and two at 17. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got my door pieces cut. Uh, so from this point to this point on two of them is 17 inches. This point to this point is 13. And this is based on uh, your Lexan being 10 by 14. It should fit in there nicely. Get this little, this door glued up. I use lots of glue in my corners. Lots. And for those of you who are going to ask, yes, this is a condiment bottle. Works really good for this. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to match up our wide strip to our wide strip and nail the corners together. And of course I had a nail come out because, you know, that's just the way life goes sometimes. Brad nails are kind of nice because you can just kind of 
bend them a few times and they'll break off. Put a little filler in it, good to go. See, here we go. There we are. Flip this over, do the same thing with the other short piece. I mean, I don't care if you like to put the piece, the two long pieces onto a short piece or two short pieces onto a long piece. That's your preference. I like it this way. Okay, get my Lexan. Okay, so here is my Lexan, your plexiglass, whatever you're using. Uh, because this is actually going to be shipped out, I like to just peel it back a little bit and ship it out with the masking on so that it helps prevent scratches. So this, now that I've got this little door frame built, I can just slip these right into right into that groove that we made on the table saw. Yeah, there might be a little play, not a big deal. As long as uh, it doesn't come out, you should be fine. Let's get the top of this put on. We're gonna set this door aside. The reason I like to do the doors first is so that it gives the glue some time to set um, before before I start sanding it and putting hinges on it, etc., etc., etc. And there is our door. So I will put that aside. I'm going to let that do its thing. And I think the next, well, the next thing I'm going to do is build our little library. So I'm going to take. So here is our bottom piece that we cut at 18 and ripped down to 11 and a quarter. And this is our back piece that's 18 um, that I put that bevel on. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. It's kind of weird. So when we do this, we're going to put a little glue on the back of the floor piece. And I'm going to take and nail my back piece to it. Now, when I do this, make sure that the tall part of the bevel is on the inside so that when you build your library, it'll slope from the front to the back instead of the back to the front. And Pop some nails in this. Oh, probably can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we got that. Now we got our side pieces. Now I've told you I've cut both sides into one piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line. Oops, I'm going to line this up with the back, and I'm going to put a little pencil mark right where the back lowest part in the back is. So when I go to the uh, to the miter saw, I've got this little pencil mark right here, and I'm going to cut this at 11 degrees from this point forward. Okay, so you can see I've got both sides cut, and I've got that 11 degree angle in. So this is the height of the back, and this will be the height of the front. So I'm going to nail this on. Uh, the high point towards the front. Remember, this is the back of the library, the floor of the library. So we'll glue that. I think I need to put some nails in my nailer. So I'll do that too. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in, like I say, with that point at the back. And move things over so you can see what I'm up to here. Um, I'm going to match up my little front piece. Make that nice and flush. Pop a nail in that. Right along the back here, I'm going to line those up. Pop a nail into there. I'm also using one and uh, three quarter inch nail for anybody who's wanting to know. I've now got one side on and we'll do the other. Okay, I guess 
on. Just do a repeat of what we just did on the other side. Line up our front pieces nice and flush. Let's see if I can have another nail come out because that's my favorite thing in the world. We'll do it along the back here. Again, line those up. Okay, so now we have the basic layout for our library. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the uh, bottom and top pieces for these. Okay. Remember, these are the two and three quarter inch pieces, and I've got one with no bevels, and I've got one with a little bevel on the top, and that'll line up with these two angles on the edge. So I'm going to cut these to length. To do that, I like to set, I don't like to use measuring tape as much as most people would think I would. I like to put things up, give it a little mark, and that gives me a really good place uh, to cut um, that there's uh, less chance for error. So I'm going to cut both of them the same. The top and the bottom technically should be the same. Glue the bottom one, same process as everything else, a little glue. I'm going to push that up about two inches or so. That good and glued on there. Uh, if you're curious about what glue I use, I, um, I'll i either use Type On 2, but sometimes I can't get my hands on that. So then I'll go to uh, the Gorilla Glue, which is actually really good. Both of them set up really quickly. And they're both exterior grade. So when these things go outside, you don't have to worry about your glue failing. Line these up with the floor. Okay. Now I've got this uh, this front piece or this top piece, and again that's with the bevel. So when I put this down, I want to make sure that that bevel lines up with the edge. If you have it the wrong way, you can see it's just it just doesn't work. So anyway, let's get that new glued on. side pieces and I like to mark out the side pieces the same way that I do um, oh, the same way that I do the top and bottom I'll just kind of line it up with the edge kind of slip it inside there and use my pencil and put a little mark there and I'll cut that one get that glued in, into place A little at the top, a little at the bottom, and these will be, that's a good one, get in there. <laughs> Look at that, perfect fit. Tappy tappy with the thumpy thing. You have it nice and flush against the outside wall. I try to do that because then it uh, helps eliminate sanding because we all love sanding, don't we? best thing in the world. Do the same thing with this side. Do another mark. And this is just the cutoff because like I say those two sides are just cut from the one piece that's one and a half inches. glue on there and we'll pop this little guy in there <laughs> thumpy thumpy into place pop some nails into that and see I rub the edge on it here 
and that's okay. So now we are going to sand this. So in order to do that, I use um, these little silicone, it's Alex Plus, they come in white tubes or red tubes, and I use that to fill the nail holes, and then I'll sand it while it's wet. So I will do that. Any little gaps, nail holes that you see, this works really, really well, and it's paint grade. So after you're done, you don't have to worry about the silicone deflecting the paint because nobody needs that. Nail holes. Even though these are nice and tight, I still like to fill them because it just gives it a nice clean finish. Okay. I filled the nail holes. Let's get the sanding. because nobody wants to watch me sand for 10 minutes uh, so yeah I just finished up did up the door I'm gonna break the edges so that there's no sharp edges I just do that by hand uh, do it on your library as well and don't forget the opening for the door okay so now I've got this uh, this our order let me try that again this library is actually ordered so they want they want a knob and magnet on there. I do offer a knob and magnet when I'm sending these out or a uh, barrel bolt lock, but yeah, they've opted for this. So for the hinges, I usually like to stick them in about two inches from the from the edge. Uh, I do use a centering bit for that. If you have them, great. If not, it's easy. It just, just makes life a little easier. When you're doing as many of these as I am, it's kind of essential. <laughs> okay, glue, or glue, screw the hinges on. And then we'll pop the door onto the library itself. It's easier to do the door and the latches uh, before you put the roof on because sometimes you have to get into the library to put, let's say, a magnet on or something like that. Okay, so now we got the door hinged. And I'm going to pop this on. I'm going to make sure all the gaps are covered. And I'm also going to uh, make sure that the left margin left margin on the door is the same as the right. So if I push down on that hinge, got seven eighths there, okay, pull it over a bit. I got one inch there, one and an eighth, a little bit more. There are one and six, one and one sixteenth. Oh. Sorry if you couldn't see that. I know sometimes my hand gets in the way, but I don't want to release it because these are uh, spring loaded. <laughs> So there's that. Once, as long as I got one screw in, I can uh, I can manage. So I'm going to make sure it's the same along the bottom. Press that down. I've got two inches there. Yep. 
pull that back a little bit. There we go. Pop another screw in here. So I'm going to pre-drill this. Now, if you don't pre-drill, you're just running the risk for the wood to split. So your choice. I like to pre-drill. And since this one's going to have a knob on it, I will pop the hole into that. For those, you need a 3 uh, bit, and that's pretty standard across the board for those screws. I should get a weird one, but... So, I'll put it right in the middle here. So, 13, six and a half. One. Yeah, my dad would shoot me if he saw me open that with my teeth. Okay, so here's the screw. Now these little knobs that I get, they're really pretty, but they're plastic. They're uh, exterior grade, so they'll expand and contract without splitting. So if you can find these, it's really, really good to have, and they won't ever rust. Um, I'm going to be putting the magnet on it, so I like to just kind of mark where the center of this is, because I don't, when you put the magnet on, I can't have the plate lining up right with this screw. So I'll put it just underneath of that. Do I have the right fit in that? I do not. Here we are. Whiskey, what are you doing? Puppy. Okay, so this is good. These are really simple to use. So what they are is you have this magnet and you screw this into the frame and then you have this. So you can just easily mark that onto the door, screw this onto the door and so it sticks pretty good when you open and close the door and you don't have to worry about the wind blowing them open. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll put it on the inside of the door frame, you can't see that, and below my mark so that that plate doesn't run on top of that uh, screw for the for the knot. Again, I'll just drill them a little bit. I mean, use whatever latches you like, but this is one that I'm using right now, so I thought I'd show you. Oops. Yeah, the screws stick to the magnet really good too. Right in the sink. So then to mark this, I'll just put this in place. Close the door and just go in and mark where that hole lines up. Drill that hole so now you can, I don't know, you can see where that screw is or not. Uh, take the plate and screw this into place. So this is, I'll show you, I'll get a little closer here in a second to show you. This is why I like to mark out where the screw is, because most of the time this would fit right on top of there if you had them centered out. But now, now you've got this door, and the magnet clicks onto it really well. Okay, now we are going to put the roof on this. Uh, for that, I already have the plywood cut. Uh, sizes are on the instructions, but I like to put a bead of silicone on the top of the walls, acts as a glue and a sealant. I'm going to, of course, I'm going to be uh, resealing the roof after I get it nailed on, but there's a good start. Um, here's my roof piece. 
pop it on and I have it so there's about an inch overhang all the way around so I am going to just double check that okay and again we're going to just put nails all the way around it make sure it's secure Make sure you nail into the top of the walls or else you're going to have all sorts of other problems because you're going to have to break more nails. Just going to double check to make sure I don't have any sticking out. I'll check on the inside. Oh, we're clear. So I am going to put a bead of silicone under underneath but you can turn it upside down if you want it might make it a little easier uh, I got a little mess going on with here with it here too but yeah you want to make sure that you uh, at the top of the walls you have a good bead going along there to make sure it stays waterproof again use uh, a latex silicone because you can paint that for standard silicone you cannot. Just clean it up a little bit. If it's a little messy, because you know it's silicone. Good times. Okay, and now this is where we come into play with our with our pieces of um, seven eighths that we cut. So I've got my four pieces right here. I'm gonna just go ahead and cut a 45 on the edge of all of them. And when you do that, you're gonna see that it's actually a rect like it's, there's the seven eighths is longer than it is wide. And it's the seven eighths that you want to put your 45 on vertically. So when you lay this onto the roof, you have a really good overlap. Okay, so I am going to line up the one corner and I'm going to mark the other side just like this. So I know where to put my 45. Like I say, I don't like using tape measures if I don't have to. It's too much room for error that way. Here's the short side. Again, line up the one and we'll mark it again. And I will cut these. Okay, so I have my four pieces cut, and just like putting the roof on, I like to put a bead of silicone along here uh, for the same reasons. This gets a lot of, uh, a lot of the elements hit these edges, so the silicone gives it a little flexibility, and it works really well as a glue. So I'll just line those up nice and flush. Pop some nails in there. Ooh, that's an awkward direction for me to do that. It's all right. Whoop. <laughs> uh, glue the miters. You don't want those coming apart on you. Okay, sorry about that interruption. All right, let's get that glued on and nailed. And after we're done doing this, all you have to do is just, again, fill your nail holes, sand it, and that'll be the end of your library. Uh, then all, you can put it up however you like, um, and just contact me if you have any questions or if there's any confusion about it. Thanks for watching.